What's up guys? Let's get right into it. Calisthenics will get you jacked and today I have for you 10 of the best muscle building calisthenics exercises of all time. Starting off our list with one of the most important muscle groups for looking jacked, the shoulders, we have the decline deficit pipe push-up. If you're looking for a quick way to radically transform your physique, Focusing on building those bolder shoulders is one of the best things you can do, and the decline deficit pike push-up is going to get you there. Pike push-ups are comparable to a more stable version of an overhead press with a barbell. The main difference here is you're moving your own body through space rather than moving an object through space. Any pike push-up will do, but I found the decline deficit pike push-up to be the perfect middle ground for building muscle. A standard pike push-up will probably be too easy for most, and a true wall-assisted deficit handstand push-up will be too difficult to allow for adequate volume. The decline deficit pike push-up not only lands you right in that 6 to 15 rep sweet spot, it's also more stable than the wall-assisted handstand version, which allows you to push those prime movers even harder. A slight deficit is all you'll need here. The added range of motion will lead to bigger and healthier shoulders, and also add some extra work for your upper chest, which is never a bad thing. Moving on to another physique transforming exercise, we have the wide grip perfect pull-up. The wide grip perfect pull-up is somewhat of a hybrid movement. It will develop your lats as all pull-ups do, but this one also works your upper back as well. The perfect pull-up, as it's called, a name I picked up from Dominic Sky, a calisthenics beast if you didn't know, was used a lot by the golden era bodybuilders. You want to pull straight up and down, pulling your chest as close to the bar as you can. You also want to force your upper back to work harder by disengaging your abs. You can do this by externally rotating your legs and bracing your glutes. You'd be surprised just how much the abs usually assist with pull-up strength. If you can manage a set of 10 body weight, wide grip, chest to bar, perfect pull-ups with a pause at the top, there's no doubt you'll have a well-developed upper back. Pair that with some big shoulders from the pike push-ups and you'll begin to see why calisthenics athletes are so jacked. But what good are big shoulders and a thick back without some nice pecs to go with them? Next up on our list, we have one of the best chest building movements of all time, the ring push-up. Not only are ring push-ups a great calisthenics exercise, they're one of the best chest building movements, period. One of the main components missing from many training programs is that fly motion, bringing your elbows closer together with straight arms. Ring push-ups accomplish this without placing undue stress on your shoulder joints like a dumbbell fly might. Ring push-ups also work the pecs through an extended range of motion which allows for an added weighted stretch and leads to tons of new muscle. Work towards 3 sets of 15 on the ring push-up with a deep stretch and pause at the bottom and full adduction at the top for some serious pec size. And while we're on the topic of ring training, let's move on to one of the most important movements you can do for a thick back and a healthy posture. Next up on our list, we have the ring row. Not only are ring rows effective for adding mass to your upper back, they allow for freedom of movement, which will help keep your joints happy, and they're also easily scalable. A beginner will see great results, starting with their hands a ways above their feet. But as you become stronger, you'll eventually be able to elevate your feet higher and higher until they're in line or slightly above your hands. This is where the real magic happens. Ring rows will develop the thickness of your upper and mid back as well as your rear delts and your lats. Becoming strong with this horizontal rowing motion will go a long way towards counterbalancing all the pressing work you'll be doing, which will keep your shoulders healthy. Working up to three sets of 20 reps with a twist of the rings and a pause at the top and a completely horizontal torso angle will add slabs of muscle to your upper back. And because it takes a while to hold on to those rings for three sets of 20, you should see some nice growth to your forearms as well. Speaking of forearms, let's move on to one of the best calisthenics bicep and forearm builders out there. Next up, we have the towel pull-up. Yes, towel pull-ups will build your back as this is a pull-up movement, but their real power lies in developing your forearms and the brachialis part of your biceps. Essentially what you're doing here is a body weight fat grip hammer curl taken to the extreme. While the cue with most pull-ups is to pull with your back, here you should focus on pulling with your arms. Because you are forced to grip the towel as hard as you can throughout the entirety of the set, nearly every muscle in your upper and lower arm will have no choice but to maximally contract at all times. This will lead to bigger arms and a strong powerful grip. 
Anyone who can perform three sets of 20 reps on this movement can expect to add a lot of size to their arms. If towel pull-ups take you part of the way towards building massive arms, then this next movement is gonna finish the job. Next up on our list, we have the bodyweight tricep extension. Like the ring row from before, this exercise can be easily scaled to any experience level. You can use rings for this one as well, but I actually prefer the rigidity of a straight bar here. The other pressing movements on this list will take care of much of your triceps growth, but the bodyweight tricep extension allows us to build what is arguably the most aesthetic part of the arm, the long head. You'll want to really emphasize the overhead stretch portion of this movement to get the results you're after, as this is where the long head will be most engaged. I find tempo training to be very beneficial with this one. So for example, you might do three seconds down, then three seconds in that fully overhead stretched position, explode up and repeat. As you become more advanced, you can increase the difficulty of the movement by moving your feet further and further away from your hands, as well as elevating your feet if you want to. Three sets of eight to 12, moving your feet progressively further away as you develop will build your triceps and paired with the other movements I've listed, lead to a well-rounded and well-muscled pair of arms. Of course, we couldn't make it through an entire video about calisthenics bodybuilding without mentioning the abs. So next up on our list, we have the hanging leg raise. If we're talking calisthenics, it doesn't get much better than this. The hanging leg raise will develop the entirety of the six pack. At the top of the movement, you get that contraction necessary to build the upper portion of the abs. And near the bottom, you'll be working through a lengthened position, which will build up those hard to develop lower abs. Remember to raise your butt as high as you can at the top of the movement to really emphasize that contraction. If you want to take this exercise to the next level, you can do the 90 degree towel version. Drape a towel over your pull-up bar and pull yourself up until your elbows are at 90 degrees. This will be your starting position. From here, complete the movement as usual. Working up to a basic three sets of 15 will go a long way towards developing a solid set of six pack abs. Up until this point, we've done a lot to build the upper portion of the back. Now it's time to finish the job with the next movement on our list, the neutral grip chest to bar pull up. This pull up variation will go a long way towards developing what I think is one of the coolest looking muscles on the body, the lower lats. The upper portion of the lats and the other smaller muscles in that region aren't usually too hard to develop. The form needed to emphasize this area usually comes naturally. This is why you often see guys who have some nice lats, but it seems as though the muscle stops just below their armpits. It's rare to see someone with crazy lower lats. So rare in fact that many people think this comes down to genetics, but this simply is not the case. Just like with any other muscle, if you wanna build it, you need focused work. And for the purpose of building lower lats that look wide enough to take flight, the neutral grip chest to bar pull up is just what you need. Pulling to your chest with a fully retracted and depressed scapula leads to the perfect pulling angle needed to add width to your back. You can apply this concept to any other pull up variation, but something about the neutral grip makes connecting with that lower lat region very easy. If you work up to three sets of 10 to 20 with a pause at the top on this movement, you should see a noticeable size increase in the width of your back. Now that we talked about building the lower portion of the lats, let's do the same with the chest with the next movement on our list, paused dips. An EMG study from a while back said dips actually build the upper pecs more than an incline bench press. Whether this is actually the case in the real world or not, this does speak volumes as to the effectiveness of the humble dip. And upper chest aside, thousands of bodybuilders over the years can attest to the power of dips for building the lower chest. Dips allow for an extreme weighted stretch on the pecs, different from what you'll get with a push-up. This is important because while dips or ring push-ups alone may build a nice chest, using a variety of different movements and hitting the muscles from different angles will always be superior for muscle development. Adding a pause at the bottom of the movement will emphasize that growth inducing stretched portion of the lift, which will lead to more muscle and allow you to get more out of fewer reps. Anyone who can maintain a semi hollow body position with the knees and chest slightly forward of the midsection for 20 clean paused reps should have themselves a chest Arnold himself would be proud of. And finally, last on our list, it's time to talk about the legs. And you guys may not like what I have to say. If you're a bodyweight calisthenics purist, 
you will never optimize your leg development. Loading your body with external resistance will always be the most effective route to bigger legs. Some of the best calisthenics guys out there use weighted movements for their legs for a reason. That said, if you're open to thinking of things a bit differently, the barbell back squat is technically a weighted calisthenics movement. And with that in mind, the back squat will take the last spot on our list. Now, don't get me wrong here, guys. I'm just trying to be honest with you. I could have told you that pistol squats or high rep bodyweight lunges will get you massive legs just for the sake of this video, but that will never be the case. Getting your pistol squats to 30 reps or your lunges to 500 per leg will work up to a certain point, but they'll never do the same thing a simple barbell back squat will. I'm not saying pistols aren't worth doing, and if you don't care about having the biggest legs possible, they may work for you. But in terms of pure muscle building potential, it's got to be the back squat. The barbell back squat will develop your legs like nothing else. Working up to one and a half times body weight for three sets of 10 should build you some pretty massive legs, but the benefits don't stop there. One of the biggest flaws that comes with pure calisthenics bodybuilding is a lack of direct lower back work. Not only does a well-developed low back look good and round out your physique, it will make many other calisthenics skills much easier as well. A strong low back means a greater transfer of energy between the upper and lower halves of the body, which means better stability with any movement, which means more muscle in the long run. The benefits of the barbell back squat are many and beyond the scope of this video, but needless to say, back squats are worth doing. And that's all there is to it, guys. If you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to check out the last one I put out, which was all about building muscle with free weights. So I appreciate you all being here, and until next time, thanks for watching.